This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio, the first of the Burr months, September, October, <laughs> November, December, my favorite time of the year. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio, and he is Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys, heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you got car questions, we've got car answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And for the shy types, 411-923, you can text your questions also. Today on the roadmap, a little bit of fact or fiction. Of course, open phones and text. And Matt, the biggest question that goes on over and over and over again, and I can go sit in my auto shop or the next auto shop or the auto shop after that, and the conversation that I hear all day long is diagnostic, diagnostic. There's a charge for diagnostic. And and, and I think that's frustrating to the consumer because it, the, do you need to charge me for diagnostic? Because I can go over to do uh, Acme Auto Parts, and they, they, they just plug into it, and they tell me what's wrong with my car. And what's the difference between what you're doing and what they're doing Give me some of the steps when someone comes to you with a problem for their car. So you may interview them over the phone. I mean, that's that's the first thing is you start to interview them at the phone and at the counter and get, get a kind of idea as far as which way you need to go as far as diagnostic. What are you going to do if someone comes well, to well, you? Well, there's, there's two people that are actually working on this car. Um, I, I mean, working. The, the technician is the one that's really doing the diagnosing or the testing. And, and I play the words a little bit. We test cars. We don't diagnose them. Diagnosis is the conclusion and the culmination of the test is when you come up with, with, with the solution or with, what the problem is. But the first, we have to communicate to the service advisor, and the service advisor has to ask you all those questions. Does it do it cold? Does it repeat when it's warm? Will it, will it duplicate? Are we going to be able to do this? At what speed? You know, how are you treating the car? Are you towing or chiller? We have to gather all kinds of information. So, and, you know, and that happens at the counter or on the telephone, and then we have to, and then we have to guess at some point. A about how long do we think this is going to take us to figure out? At my shop, Virginia Auto Service, we have a level one diagnostic or a level two. Sometimes we'll just give a range because, you know, honestly, we get in there. Sometimes you go right to a problem. I might quote you a couple hundred dollars of, of potential charge to diagnose or to test the problem, but we might only exhaust 60 or $70 worth of testing uh, to, to find that problem. So first thing we have to have, and people say, well, why is it so much? Well, it may not be that much, but we need to have a window. We have to have a place to work within. If I only have a cert, uh, authorization, say, for $75, and I give that out to the technician, we can evaporate $75 pretty quick. And then we got to stop, and then we have to call and communicate what we've done. So, so we need some room to work with, for one. Um, and then once that's been established, the technician's got the car. He's got to go test drive it. Just take the overall condition, how the car feels, how does it drive, can we duplicate the symptom. And, and you know, and it's not always a check engine light that needs diagnostic work. I mean, that's what I did as a technician. I was the electronics guy, the performance guy, the diagnoser, the tester. Um, and I always looked at electrical problems as needing diagnosis. But mechanical problems take just as much time to figure out, too, where you don't have these fancy meters and tools. You've got to use the seat of your pants and your brains and your experience. Well, uh, I'm, I, I had a car. A Honda Pilot came to my shop, and it's a customer that I've known for a while, and she went to Acme Auto Parts. And they scanned it, and they said, oh, looks like your catalytic converter is bad. you know. And so she left there. She came over to our place, and she said, I think I need a catalytic converter. We took a look at it, and she had just got the car from somebody else who just had an oil pan repair done, and they had to remove the exhaust, took it apart, put it back together, and when they put it back together, they left an exhaust leak. Well, guess what? Now the computer thinks we got a bad catalytic converter. That's a $1,500 job. That That's the thing at the Acme Auto Parts is that they never actually do the repair, so they never have to know if they were right or wrong or indifferent. So we could just throw that part in there, but that could be $1,500 that we spent needlessly. Well, you could, you know, and I'm sitting here thinking about the medical term, okay? The, I think there's a there's a, economics is what drives this, first of all. 
not everybody can be a doctor, okay? You got to be smart. You have to understand the drugs and the body and the anatomy and everything that's going. But just about anybody can kind of figure out something mechanical that, that, that breaks. So everybody's got a brother or an uncle or a grandpa that used to be a mechanic and made these things look easy. And I joke around and I say, is it hard? I said, well, brain surgery is easy if you know what you're doing. <laughs> it's not that. Nothing's hard if you know how to do it, right? Right. But, but the economic, what I was getting to is, could you imagine if we, ha- if we could walk into a pharmacy and buy our own drugs? Is that a little bit what like AutoZone and the parts store do? The economics are they want to sell parts. The drug companies want to sell parts, but they can't. They can't. They have to sell them through the doctor. Could you imagine if only the auto parts could be sold with a prescription from us? Mm. A little bit different. So I think that's part of the problem. People don't see the value because they they can go do this. In the auto parts stores, they want to sell parts. So what are they going to do? They're going to help you sell. parts. By, by parts. I got another one. Last week you were you weren't here, so we were trashing you on the radio. Perfect. I would well, expect were... <laughs> nothing. I would expect nothing than trash talk and lies and all that kind of stuff. And we about had me when I'm going. we had John Riggle in here, who you know, he's a yeah. really good technician, right? And uh, we had a car, and it was it was a caravan, and they came in in this car. You put it in the gear in the morning, it didn't re- really want to move. Okay, all the codes people say when you well, you just plug into it, it tells you what's wrong. All those codes would have dictated a bad transmission. And John says, I don't know, Dave. It's got all these codes. It doesn't have really have these symptoms. But the one thing that I notice is the speedometer bumps up to five miles per hour when you're stopped. And uh, I happen to remember a situation about six years ago where I ran into one that was hard to figure out. And I said, oh, sounds like we got a bad diode in the alternator. Guess what? He went and tested the alternator. It was bad. It was still charging, but it wasn't doing right. And that's what it was. But if you would have just plugged into it, you would have had the wrong answer. And, uh, and they would have been selling you a grip of parts now at the parts store, right? Exactly. So people think, well, don't you guys just plug into it and that gives you the answer? Well, it gives us a starting place. You know, it says, hey, we, we're, you know, we're kind of over here in left field. Let's go look in left field to see what's going on. So it'll give us a starting place, but it can be completely wrong also. That's where the testing comes from, uh, ha- having the test done to confirm it and just plugging into it. Maybe it would be right 50% of the time. But I don't think a consumer is willing to spend $1,500 for 50% accuracy. Well, no, they're, they're, they're not. I mean, and there's much more that goes into it. Hey, I got a bad review on Yelp this week. All right, I'll, I'll talk about it. We got good ones. Don't air your laundry. And, and, we, and we get bad ones. But what's funny is we have this gal that's got a Volkswagen. You know, and she's been in three times prior. She complained every three times. So on one hand, I'm glad she's not coming back. But, but – we get her car, we check it out, we do this testing, and if someone would just, what she did, you could see all this, it would bother to read. We went through a process. She had a code. We tested, we found the part. We went, we did a flow process. We went through it and pinned out each wire, measured the resistance uh, on the circuit, tested to see that it's getting the proper signal from the computer, which, by the way, you had to lift the car in the air. You have to take the wheel off. You have to remove the plastic fender inner liner to access this. We do all the testing. She doesn't want to have it fixed. She's upset about it for some reason. So um, then she goes to AutoZone for a second opinion of what we already told her, and they verify, yeah, that's what you need. So now in her mind, AutoZone, uh, we charged her $200 to plug it in and to tell her the same thing AutoZone told her. Well, I got news for you, sister. AutoZone didn't do everything that we did. In, in, In most parts, they say, oh, so you're going to charge us $100 to just look at my car? And I joke, I say, no, I'll pull up a lawn chair and look at your car all day. I won't charge you anything. We have to, it takes tools, knowledge. I mean, you have to figure this stuff out. Well, and then the other thing is just even testing the battery. You know, how many problems have you had in your shop? I was just talking about a bad alternator on a caravan. Oh, yeah. But how many times is the battery that causes the issue? You know, so if someone gives you this little diagnostic thing, well, sometimes that, that computer spits out bad information because you got a bad battery. Yeah. You know, it's plugged into the, instead of being plugged into the 120 volt, it's only plugged into 90 volt, so it's not working right. <laughs> right. So I don't know how many weird diagnostic issues I've seen because of a bad battery. So that is one of the first things you check, right, Matt, when you pull in the bay? Yeah, I mean, we, we're, anytime you have a check engine light on or you've got that weird or that intermittent, the first thing we're doing is an alternator test, charging system test, and testing the battery. Toyota uh, oxygen sensor heater problems we see, they're very sensitive. I mean, you cannot have a bad battery. That's why we recommend interstate batteries. I mean, you've got to have a good one. 
You know, and not only do you have to have a good one to make the car perform every day like you want it to, you don't want to have the car not start. I mean, well, check it out. We're coming in the busy time of the year. So you're you're taking the kids to the soccer practice. You're taking them to school. You've got in-laws coming in for Thanksgiving. You've got all that stuff going on. And there's there's a couple kind of people in the world, the people that have a bad battery. <laughs> you're going to get a bad yeah, battery, I yeah, guess. The, is what... Either I've had one or going to have one, like, like the accident. You've either had an accident or you're going or you're gonna, or you're gonna to have one. In the best time, you know, if you're going to get your air condition fixed, don't get it fixed in July. It's probably going to be more expensive. <laughs> but if you want to get it fixed in the fall, you know, or the spring or that, that important time of year. So the fall is a great time to get a new battery in your car. If it's been in there longer than two or three years, you're living on borrowed time. So... Pop into any bumper-to-bumper shop and pick yourself up an interstate battery. When we come back, we're taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family-owned and operated and bumper-to-bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Auto repair just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Look at this. I take a week off when we come back to some new music. I love new music. New music. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, along with Dave Riccio. And as usual, every Saturday, we are your KTAR car guys helping you with your car. If you want to call in, if you have a question, this show is about whatever you want it to be about. It's helping you with your car. It doesn't matter. You're selling it. You're buying it. You're trading it, you want to burn it because you hate it or, or need an opinion on that big list of repairs that you might need. Or today we're talking about any kind of diagnostic. Maybe you're the guy with the uh, or gal with the black tape over the over the check engine light on the dash. Call us and we can help guide you through that. It's 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411 411- Nine two three. So, Dave, we were talking about the diagnostic process. What really goes into this? I mean, you have the write-up at the counter. You have the technician. He's got to go test drive the car. Then he's got to get out a very expensive piece of equipment, run through some tests. Sometimes you might be able to make a little adjustment, clear the codes, go do it again, see if it repeats. There, you know, and then you make a repair. After you make this repair, then we have to still verify that it works. Go through the, go through the, oftentimes a multiple test drive. So there, there's a lot to it. There's not just, you know, there's. I want to get rid of the, a couple of those myths, and they've been out since the 80s, you know, when we got the big, huge diagnostic machine. That, that <laughs> we could, can't get rid of those could, if we tried. That could print out. I'll tell you what, everybody says, well, doesn't it just give you a printout? <laughs> well, I, and I go back to the medical. I mean, you can. I can print out the screenshot of that EKG at the hospital, right? You ever been in there, and that thing's just real and paper out? Mm-hmm. Well, here it is. There's the printout. What does it mean? That's the true question. I hate so. EKGs because they pull out those little sticky things. And I don't know if you ever seen my chest. It's got a <laughs> lot of hair on it. It's a painful experience. I had an, another vehicle this week. It was a Toyota 4Runner with 215,000 miles. He just moved here from California. He was told by another shop he needed a catalytic converter. So we, we, we verified it. You know, looking at the looking at the data from the O2 sensors and everything. And there was a code for that. Guess what? We put a catalytic converter in it. Guess what it didn't do? Didn't fix it. Didn't fix it. Right. <laughs> so we ended up changing out a, a sensor. We ended up reinstalling his old catalytic converter, you know, because mm-hmm. if he didn't need one, we weren't going to sell him one. But those are some of the things where you just plug into it, and if you just go, man, right off that code, you know, has 50% chance you can be wrong. You know, I think sometimes, too, I uh, with, the, with, the, with the diagnostic or the testing charge, it can get contentious with people sometimes. And a lot of times the people that – I hate to say this, but economics kind of drives attitude. 
mm. um, or perception. Uh, oftentimes, the people that may, maybe maybe they can afford it, but or maybe they don't understand that they need to afford it. This, this is part of the process. Um, but but we've got to do diagnostic, and part of the reason we we have a charge for that too, at least in my opinion, we want to um, we want to um, qualify you as a customer. If you cannot afford to spend a hundred or one hundred and fifty dollars doing testing, or two hundred and fifty dollars sometimes, why are we wasting our time? Because you may not be able to afford the repair or want to afford the repair. I tell people we give a window sometimes. It might be anywhere from a hundred to two hundred dollars to figure this out. Sometimes we get to surprise them. I call them up and say, Sally, your car's done. It's been diagnosed. There was a part that was 62 bucks. Um, it was part of the testing. Everything's done. It's $204. You're out the door. You're already done. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Great. So, again, it gives us some room to work with. So if you have questions, you want to – we can vet out a lot of these questions. Maybe you've had diagnostic work done in the past. Um, you can be more than happy to give us some phone calls, 602 602- 277 5827 at 602-277-KTAR. Yeah, I mean, you know, diagnostic has always always kind of been a challenge. And, you know, do you, you know, the other thing we were talking about, we always talk about stress, and we want to remove the stress from auto repair. And part of removing stress from auto repair is really budgeting for it and also owning a car that, that fits your budget. And one of the th- things that I see happen, Matt, is I see these really nice cars that originally sold new for like, Sixty or eighty thousand dollars, and and it funnels down to the third owner who picked it up for ten, but they don't realize how much that luxury vehicle costs to fix. You know, so I, when I see someone different economically to to, to fix a BMW, for instance, uh-huh. it's an expensive car to keep on the road. They are. Well, you see it and you say, oh wow, I can have a BMW 700 series for ten thousand bucks. Well, you could also spend that'd be a, ten. That'd be a seven series. Seven series. <laughs> you, you, you're going to spend. You're going to spend ten. You could. You could real easily on that car spend ten thousand bucks just in repairs, and it may only have a hundred thousand miles on it. Those are some of the things that come on. So when you're looking at cars, if you buy a car in the luxury family that you wouldn't necessarily buy new or want to buy new, you don't want to buy one used either because they're still very expensive to fix. And, and sometimes those cars are not. The original owner is not staying with the car for more than. Three years, you know, they, they right. get a new one every three years, and then it kind of funnels down to the second and third owner. Perfect example of that we have a, had a customer yesterday with a Land Rover. She only has about sixty five, you no, know, it's sixty nine thousand miles on it. Needs some brakes and some normal repairs, but she didn't know the history of the car. And this is one of those ones that will go fifteen thousand miles on an oil change. Well, I got to tell you, that same engine is in a Ford product, and, and that oil change is is uh, thirty five hundred <laughs> miles yeah. or five thousand miles. So. But that's a good example. There were some questions about some of her past maintenance. Indicators were that some of it hadn't been done, so we have the conversation. Did you buy the car new? When did you get it? Oh, I just bought it at 52,000 miles. Well, guess what? At 52,000 miles in this particular rover, there was a major service that was due. We don't know if this was done. And I said, most people, from my experience, don't spend the money it takes to do a major service on a Land Rover and then trade it in. Right, they're like, I'm just so, paying it off. So it's perfect for the next guy. And then her response is, and this is a great job by the car salespeople, oh, they take care of everything. I of mean, course. we don't even know what the definition of is is, right, uh, let alone what everything is. So what is everything? Right. Well, we vacuum the car and we check the pressure in the tires. And make it from- safe. Brakes, you know, but do they do tune-ups and maintenance? So, to your luxury car point, you, you got to know. Absolutely, we got calls rolling in at six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. We're going to go with Lori in Gilbert. Looks like she's got a question in her car. Hey, Lori, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Uh, Lori. Yana. Oh, there you are. It has about. Hello. Yeah. yeah what did. kind of car you got, Hi. Lori? Hi, I have a 2005 Toyota Sienna with 93,000 miles on it, and it has engine knock. And I want to know, is engine knock bad, and how do I get rid of it? Well, it's definitely bad, but tell us a little bit more. Is it, I mean, is it knock, knock, knock like a hammer, or is it a very rapid tick, 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 tick noise? Or, it's, or? Like a, it's like a pinging noise. And when, do, when does it make this noise? When I'm accelerating. Okay, so that's not what we would call knock necessarily. That's detonation or pinging, uh, spark knock okay. is what you would call it. So the typical person that might hear this noise is someone who who the car 
you get bad gasoline somewhere and and it's pinging maybe you're, or the car's running hot you're pulling up a say sunset point or something traveling and you might get a little rattle now your sienna that probably doesn't take premium fuel so I, I wouldn't think that you're putting the wrong gasoline if you had a performance engine in that i would i would lean towards maybe check and make sure you're using premium fuel but in your case you don't need to i would suspect that you have a carbon buildup in issue in the engine you're also getting 93,000 miles the timing belt on that car um, is due at 105,000 and it might start to get some slack in it and allow the timing to be off but the computer should compensate for that you know I have a, a 2010 Tundra and I jumped out into traffic the other day and romped on the gas and it was pinging <laughs> rattling I'm like what's going on and I looked down and I have zero miles till empty on my gas tank oh you're running out of <laughs> gas get a little lean yeah it was running lean and causing that pinging so really what's happening is the timing's off in the car which is not likely on a 2005 we're starving it for fuel or it's running a little bit lean or we have uh, carbon buildup in the engine. Maybe it's time for the, quote, tune-up and fuel injector clean. Well, I'm thinking of the thing. diagnostic on this. She didn't mention that she had any check engine lights on, and I doubt she did. You know, she's starting to notice a ping when she's accelerating. But that's where the diagnostic comes in. So, I mean, we could be looking at things like mass airflow meter. What do the fuel trims look like? Is this thing leaning out? Do we have a problem with the mass airflow sensor? Those aren't codes that are ever going to show up at Acme Auto Parts because there is no code. And that's what we yeah. call a no-code co no code diagnosis, and that's where we really got it in and do some, do some homework. So, anyway, when we come back, we're taking your calls at 602-277-5827. Listen to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Valley's only all-news morning show is on Arizona's news station. With traffic and weather every six minutes. And the latest breaking news on your way to work. Start your day with Arizona's morning news. Weekdays 5 to 9 on Arizona's news station. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed not coercing me into unnecessary work, ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, GoodWorks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. GoodWorks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at GoodWorksAutoRepair.com. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun, and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby, owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. KTAR News Time, 1130. I'm Mike Sackley. One minor injury has been reported as a result of a 5.6 earthquake in Oklahoma. Pawnee County Emergency Management Director Mark Grandell says a man protecting his child suffered a head injury when part of a fireplace fell on him. The man was treated at a hospital and released. U.S. Geological Survey says there were also about a half dozen aftershocks in the same area. The music manager who helped introduce N.W.A. to the masses has died. Jerry Heller was 75. He co-founded Ruthless Records with Eazy-E, which released N.W.A.'s album Straight Outta Compton in 1988. 
Arizona will soon have more direct flights to Mexico. Starting next month, the Mexican airline Aeromar will enter the Tucson market. It'll add four weekly flights between Tucson International Airport and the cities of Los Mochis, Mazatlan, Guadalajara, and Hermosillo. I think it's terrific. I mean, Mexico is our number one trading partner, times four internationally. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey says more flights mean more trade and tourism. Sky Harbor Airport already has eight Mexico destinations. Now let's get a check on traffic in the rmegold.com traffic center. Here's Mike Daniels. Cycle on 19th Avenue in Myrtle and 32nd Street remains closed both directions, right between Stanford and Lincoln Drive due to bridge work. This part brought to you by Ace. Ace is the place for the helpful hardware folks. Your neighborhood Ace has everything you need for your painting projects, like their best paint, Bellspar Optimus, and everything else you need to get the job done right. Only at Ace, the helpful place. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. We're looking at sunny skies today with a high of 105. Clear tonight, the low 76, and sunny Sunday, the high 101. Right now in Gilbert, 98 degrees. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. Whether replace or repair, call Howard Air. Matt and Dave, KTAR's car guys on Bumper to Bumper are back with you next. I'm Mike Sackley on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. It's that time of year again, Matt. That's right, Dave. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio's Summer of Love for Phoenix Children's Hospital. We're sharing the love to help you and your car make it through another sizzling summer with the best service, products, and advice in our Bumper to Bumper Radio approved shops. Help us pass along that love to PCH. Just donate a buck when you visit us, and we'll match it for the kids. For more information on Summer of Love or shop locations, go to BumperToBumperRadio.com today. Hi, this is Lori Grenier. You've seen me on Shark Tank. One obstacle many small businesses face is that getting the capital they need can be a difficult task. That's where Cabbage comes in. Cabbage provides simple, flexible access to a line of credit up to $100,000. They have helped 80,000 businesses with over $2 billion in funding. Go to Cabbage.com or call 888-CABBAGE. You'll get a decision in minutes and can start using your funds immediately. Access your line from a phone or computer and only pay for what you take. Make Cabbage your first resort for business funding. In life, there are certain relationships outside of family and friends that are important. For instance, if your car breaks down, you want to have a relationship with an auto repair shop that you trust to repair your car. The same goes for your doctor, your accountant, and your attorney. Why? Because the services they provide involve health and financial decisions, and it's important to hire a trusted professional. This same principle applies to real estate. Hi, I'm Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. For most of us, our home is the largest financial commitment and asset we will own in our lifetime. So when you decide to sell, it's important to hire a professional, knowledgeable real estate agent that you can trust to represent your interests and provide the best customer service available. If you would like a consultation to help determine the value and discuss a comprehensive marketing plan to sell your home, please visit my website at lisareneehenry.com. That's Lisa Renee, R-E-N-E-E, Henry.com. Come experience the difference a great real estate agent can make. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that will help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back. First show of September. You know, Matt, we started September 10th, like yeah. five years ago. This, yeah, we're coming up on our five-year anniversary, and boy, I bet it would be. I've done it. You know, I changed out my cell phone recently, and Dave and I used to go practice. We'd go down to Tri-City Transmission or, or my shop, Virginia Auto Service, and sit in the office, and we didn't have any recording stuff. We'd never done this before, and uh, but we're good friends, so we could always have a conversation and uh, so we used to pull out the uh, the iPhone, right, and put it on the voice recorder. Dave and I would pretend we're doing a show. <laughs> and then we'd go back. We're and still listen. pretending, we're, but you guys are listening. Well, we're, we're, yeah, yeah that, exactly. We had some people listening now before it was just the walls, and even they were cringing. But uh, it was really painful to go back and listen to some of those before we even did the oh, show. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And, you know. I think we do a pretty good job now of carrying this thing, but man, it, <laughs> it was it was it, it was rough at the early goings. Well, we've got Michael Henry on the line. He's part of the bumper to bumper family, and one of the things that we didn't do five years ago that we do now, he's going to fill us in on that and how that's working out. Hey, Michael, how's it going? 
Hello, fellas. How are you? Happy Labor Day weekend. Oh, yeah. Loving the Burr Month. Yeah, huh? And you know I'm happy because you know what today is, right? Saturday? <laughs> it's college football. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Matt gets exciting about racing. You get excited about college football, and I get excited because it's cooling down. And I go biking again. That's oh, right. man, I wish it was a little bit cooler for uh, tailgate weather, but ASU kicks off tonight, U of A kicks off, uh, there's amazing non-conference games, uh, Alabama-USC later, so hey, the, in, the, the, it out. The Indy cars are at Watkins Glen, too. Well, it's <laughs> all reason to have a frosty adult beverage, but we won't drink and drive, so everyone's got to be safe on Labor Day weekend. Absolutely, no drinking and driving and no texting. No texting. No, just concentrate on your activities on the game and on the TVs this weekend and stay out of the cars or do the magical Uber trick. Right. So, hey, Michael, I think we're going to touch – we're touching base. Everybody, all the listeners know what a great job Phoenix Children's Hospital and, K, and KTAR did for Phoenix Children's Hospital, record setting over a million and a half dollars. Yeah. We've had the Summer of Love promotion happening for – at all the bumper to bumper shops with our goal to get I think it was fifteen thousand dollars. So I think you've got an update uh, on that on that uh, deal, right? Yeah, the update's gonna be this, two things. One is first and foremost, thanks to all of our listeners and thanks to all of our great shops. I mean we have shops anywhere from the north side, east side, west side, south side, everywhere from, you know, the actors of Mesa and Mesa to SNS on the west side and Air Park up north, Matt and you down there in Phoenix and even Greg all the way down to Chandler at ADS and and the great thing is, uh, I guess one of the updates is really going to be this. The uh, promotion has been going all summer. It's uh, the summer of love from bumper to bumper, and you guys are just talking about the uh, fifth year. We are in our fifth year, and I do remember having to get a tutor for you guys to get you started <laughs> doing the training. Yeah, I still and haven't got the invoice paid for that yet either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I believe our tutor is probably listening in from his old page, but that's better five years later. And the great thing about this promotion, we've been doing kind of a jump on board to KTAR to support what they're doing, and then we kind of jumped off and did our Summer of Love promotion, which has been going on all summer. The update is, you know, thinking about it, you know, our promotion was supposed to go through Labor Day, even though the give on was here a couple weeks ago. We keep going to try to get everyone through the summer, and I'm going to push this thing executive decision until Tuesday. You know, we'll do it the day after Labor Day. A lot of our shops are probably closed this weekend. They're spending time with family. We'll go through Tuesday, and then we'll come back on board and kind of let everyone know where we finished up. But we do have a big goal, and uh, I guess the, the motivation here is if you haven't found that good relationship that Matt and Dave are always talking about, just go to bumper to bumper radio, uh, dot com and check out – a uh, new relationship and a new fresh start with a, a really great shop, or even if you're just going to think about getting an oil change um, and you want to share a dollar or so, all the shops match it, and uh, we raise some nice funds for Phoenix Children's Hospital, which is a which is a great cause, as you guys know. Well, that sounds great, Michael. So I imagine you're going to go to the Frosty Beverage Store and uh, go watch your ASU football. You have a good weekend. I am close to heading that direction right now. I'm going to have to definitely take the porta cooler with me, but it's all good. All right, sounds good. Have a good one, Michael. Hey, have a great weekend, guys. We've got Michelle, David, and Walter, and a couple open lines at 602-277-5827. We are going to go with Michelle on a 2005 Toyota Taco, which is the abbreviation for Tacoma in the automotive shop. How can we help you, Michelle? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Um, when I back out of my drive, well, I guess when the, when the vehicle's sitting all night and I go to back out of my driveway, um, it generally, right now, it, it's actually a six, I think it's a six speed, it's a stick, so it won't all of a sudden now go into reverse, so if I pump the, um, clutch pedal four or five times and then maybe the gas a couple times, I'm sorry, the brake a couple times, I can get it in reverse. But then if I start driving and I go to the grocery store or wherever I park it, again, it does not want to go in reverse. So I don't know if I've got a bad clutch or if my transmission is going. And sometimes going into first, it will grind as well. It shifts fine driving. It just does not want to go in reverse. So if I drive somewhere and I park it, I'm stuck again. And if I mess with it long enough, I finally get it in reverse. But it sometimes takes a while. Well, I've got I've got two answers for you, Michelle. One for everybody who's listening who drives a stick shift, and then the second is for what I think is going on with your car. Now, on reverse, most 
stick shifts, you want to go, when you go in reverse, you want to start out by pushing the clutch in, go to a forward gear first. That helps stop the rotation of the transmission, and then over into reverse. And uh, that's something everybody should do. And, I, and I, people come to my shop, they say, we're having a problem going in reverse, and I show them that, and they go, oh, wow. I never knew that. I've been driving this car for five years. Now, as your car is worn, you notice something is different. So whether you've been doing that or not, what what happens with clutches, they fail in two ways. They fail to either connect is one way, and that's when a clutch is slipping, or they fail to fully disconnect. And I think you're having an issue where the clutch is not fully disconnecting. And the two places that's going to show up is going to be reverse and first gear. So I think that's what's going on with your car. And the quick way that you can test that is go ahead and push it over to reverse where it's kind of holding you out. You don't have to grind it, but you can just kind of feel you're up against the wall uh, and then turn the engine off. And as soon as you turn the engine off, if all of a sudden the shifter goes right into reverse, that's what's happening. The clutch is not fully disengaging. So most... Toyotas are hydraulic. They have external hydraulics. So if it was a Tri-City transmission, we'd be looking at those hydraulics first to make sure that's not the problem. Yeah, because she said she has to pump it. So that's a, a good indicator that you might have a hydraulic issue. So that's what's going on. Hopefully it's not, not a whole clutch, maybe something simple as far as hydraulics. But you can find a good shop at bumper to bumper radiocom Perfect. Hey, while we're on the Toyota topic, I want to go back to Laura, who before the break had a had a noise that she described as a knock, but it learned out it was actually pinging or detonation. And one of the things that often gets fixed with that too, when we're when you have to go through and do the testing, you don't have to have a check engine light on to do testing. We can go in and look at the data. It's like looking at that EKG screen and looking for the lines that are out of place, and we and we can correlate that to a, an issue with the car. But a lot of things that can happen, those little problems over time, they get corrected with computer updates and computer programming. Because honestly, in that car with 90,000 miles, you wouldn't really expect to see a lot uh, wrong on that on that Sienna. Well, even, you know, yeah. we, we mentioned catalytic converters have come up a few times. There's even software updates where computers are testing the cat way too tight. Yeah. And the manufacturers come up with software updates to kind of back that off. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that, again, you're not going to get at Acme Auto Parts when they plug into it and go up. Oh! Need a catalytic converter, you know, that type of thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, you really have to do some And that would save you thousands just to do a software yeah. update. So anyhow, thanks so much for the call, Michelle. 602-277-5827. Looks like we're going to go with David on a 95 Gulfstream motorhome. How can we help you, David? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. First of all, great show. I learn a lot every weekend, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, Curiosity question. I'm picking up a 95 Gulfstream uh, motorhome, 34 foot, has a 460 Ford, runs great. I drove it. Just wondering if you'd give me some insight on maybe those motors, some dependability, what I should look for. It seems to run great, but, you know, you're putting this money out. It's got the big 460 Ford in it, fuel injected. Just didn't know if you had any insight on that. I don't know that we run into. David, I have a blank stare in our face. I don't know that we run into the 460 stuff all that often. I mean, that's just kind of been a workhorse for for years. You know, that's kind yeah, of my. Does that one have the uh, spark plugs? Is that the big nope. V10 inch? No. Oh, so, no, yeah, yeah, it's just, just the 460 of old. Love that baby. You got to fill it up just to get to the gas station. That's <laughs> one thing I can tell you about it. <laughs> so, how many miles does that thing have on it? No. Oh, I. I no, you, you, I disconnected. Oh, yeah, man. He's, he's there. I think the big thing is just, you know, what happens with the motorhomes and the, a lot of these Sun City gems, they don't get driven. Enough. And that's worse sometimes. So, you know, the coolant, that stuff rots just sitting there. So you want to make you, know, you ask about things to keep keep ahead of. Turns acidic. Keep keep track of your tires, your your belts and hoses. Uh, make sure the coolant stays fresh. If you have fresh coolant, you really don't need to worry about the hoses as much. So. Just just stay regular on it, and I think you'll keep it going a long time. It's time for Fact or Fiction. We haven't played that in so long. I mean, it's, it's literally been like, that was one of the first things we did five years ago was come up with that piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, anyhow, the Fact or Fiction for today is related to the almighty tire. If you drive a car, you've got tires. So sometimes there's confusion about the tires and how much air to put in them. So I'll state it this way. The best way to know how to fill up your tire is by reading that number on the side of the tire that says max PSI cold. Fact or fiction? That's a big old fat F. <laughs> They're both <an> F. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I got you. Wait a minute. Matt got a lot of Fs uh, in school. Huh. <laughs> fact or fiction? Well, if you want to blow your hands off, 
or <laughs> or disfigure your face. Uh, spend the weekend in the hospital. So violent this morning. Uh, I guess I would call that fiction. I we don't want to be putting anywhere near that pressure on, in the tire on a hot tire or on a loaded tire. So the best way to find as you're out traveling, maybe your tire pressure light comes on on the highway or wherever. Uh, the best way to find is going to be either the owner's manual, but the most convenient place, it's on the door jam. Usually the driver's side door jam, either on the door or on the jam itself. Sometimes on some older cars, it would be on the gas cap door, but that's the guidelines you want to use for filling your tire pressure, not the number. The number on the sidewall of the tire is the maximum pressure at the maximum load of that tire. So at 2,680 pounds, this tire can only handle 80 pounds of pressure. That doesn't mean put 80 pounds of pressure in the in the tire. And if you haven't seen that sticker or even paid attention, you can have you can be in the know about your car. There's also the tire size of your car tire in there. So you want to know, you're going to go buy some tires. You want to make sure they sell you the right size. Well, if they're a good professional shop like S&S Tire, they are, but you want to make sure you're getting the right size tire, and you can verify that with that sticker. So not only does it have the PSI front and rear, and they're not always the same front and rear, and then it also has the tire size. And I'm not a big I'm not a big believer in switching up tire size. People say, you know, I want a little wider stance. I want to look big and bad. When you do that with a modern car, you just affect so many other things like the ABS and the stability control and all, all that stuff goes on. So I'm a big fan of sticking with the factory size tires. Anyhow, when we come back, we've got time for a couple more calls at 602-277-5827. You listen to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. The Valley's only all-news morning show is on Arizona's news station. With traffic and weather every six minutes and the latest breaking news on your way to work. Start your day with Arizona's morning news. Weekdays 5 till 9 on Arizona's news station. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. In life, there are certain relationships outside of family and friends that are important. For instance, if your car breaks down, you want to have a relationship with an auto repair shop that you trust to repair your car. The same goes for your doctor, your accountant, and your attorney. Why? Because the services they provide involve health and financial decisions, and it's important to hire a trusted professional. This same principle applies to real estate. Hi, I'm Lisa Henry with West Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. For most of us, our home is the largest financial commitment and asset we will own in our lifetime. So when you decide to sell, it's important to hire a professional, knowledgeable real estate agent that you can trust to represent your interests and provide the best customer service available. If you would like a consultation to help determine the value and discuss a comprehensive marketing plan to sell your home, please visit my website at lisarenehenry.com. That's Lisa Renee, R-E-N-E-E, Henry.com. Come experience the difference a great real estate agent can make. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Man, that song just reminds me of Back to the Future. When I was a kid, I loved that movie. I could watch it over and over and over again. Ah, two and three. Two was not that good. Three was better. I'm not a big movie guy. No? Nah. 
I love movies when I was a kid, and now I'm I'm completely indifferent to movies. People are quoting movie lines, and I'm like, I don't know that one. If it happened in the 80s or 90s, I know it. Yeah, if it's like Fletch or used cars or <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> way too much. <laughs> well, I don't think that's quite how it went, Dave. But <laughs> that is an Arizona classic: <laughs> used cars. <laughs> Or sneaking into the movie theater at 32nd Street and Shea. Bill and Ted's was filmed here, too. Yeah. Paradise Valley High School, way back in the day. What are some other movies? I don't know. (laughs) Anyhow, we got to get to Walter uh, uh, in a 1987 Grand Marquis. How can we help you, Walter? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Oh, thank you for having my call. You bet. Yeah, I I just just had a car for like a month. The car is only getting 97,000 miles. So... It's been stacked on the garage, you know, it's from an uh, older couple. And uh, I just noticed when I step on the uh, stoplight and when I step on the gas, it's kind of like mm, kind of shaking before it starts and run. you know what I mean? Well, when you accelerate away from the light is when it starts to shake on that initial taking off, maybe the first yeah. three to yeah. eight, ten yeah. miles yeah. an hour? Yeah, it will run. If I step on the gas all the way, it will just, boom, jump right there. Uh-huh. So well, is there any problem with the uh, gas bomb or something? No, I mean, 1987 car, that's going to be a pretty rudimentary computer control system on that, although pretty reliable. car that sat around a long time. You know, that thing may seem to be taken out on the freeway and just romped a little bit. and, and Yeah, that's, that's what I've been driving for like once out. in a while, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 runs, it still runs good, though. Yeah. If you need help blowing it out, I'm really good at flogging cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I, and I'm thinking, you know, if you drive through that, you know, a lot of times an engine misfire, it happens on the light tip in acceleration. But if you no, just, it don't. It, if it's you not. Ju- it don't do, it, do it like that, yeah. Right. But if you just floorboard it... Um, you know, you, you drive right through it at times. So I'm thinking we could have an ignition system misfired, uh, maybe a throttle position sensor. Yeah, you I could, remember those. The, the, that motor back in the day, the throttle position sensors would cause that little glitch, yeah. when you, a little, little lag when you're first leaving the line. But I have a feeling, too, and he said, you know, this is a – he got the car from an older couple, and it's been sitting – I mean, 1987 with only 97,000 yeah. miles. That's that a car's bo- hardly been driven. And those old Grand Marquis, those are solid cars. I mean, you can't really – I mean, they'll they'll take a beating and come back for more. They're just, <laughs> they're just you know. And, um, and I think that's that's the five liter in there. Yeah, probably more yeah, than likely. More than but, likely. But one thing for for people that are out that are looking at that, I call them Sun City Queens, and 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 you kind of mentioned it, Matt, earlier in the show. When these vehicles sit, it, it causes issues. You know, these things just kind of deteriorate because there's chemicals in them, oils and gas and coolants and all that stuff. That stuff just kind of changes characteristics over time. And so that's one of the things that pops up. I see coolant is the biggest problem on an older car that's sat most of its life. And it's little things like, oh, we can put radiator hoses in it and stuff like that, but also in the intake manifold is leaking. Right. And then after that, the heater core is leaking. And, and I feel like you're just forever chasing leaks. So there's going to be a period of time where you're going to have to fix a bunch of leaks. It's just, just part it, of the deal. It happens, and that's the, you know, the, the trade-off sometimes with, with buying one of those... Sun City Gems or, or the cars that have, have sat for a while. Buy a golf cart from out there instead. You'd be better off. <laughs> yeah, I need one. Anybody got a golf cart for sale? I'm looking. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for the call, Walter. We're going to go in gl- to Glenn in Mesa on a 1998 Chevy pickup. How can we help you, Glenn? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Um, I got a, my my truck. Um, it's it's uh, losing a coolant. Um, uh, I don't know where it's. Where it's losing from, there's nothing underneath it when I stop. But um, I took it in and had it, you know, they pressure tested it and stuff like that, and they said everything was uh, everything was fine. It wasn't losing pressure. It held its pressure. But I noticed when I fill up the reservoir that it goes down, and then at some point in time it's empty. And um, I pressure tested it again with a friend's pressure tester, and it seemed to do fine. But then I keep having to fill up that reservoir. And I don't know where the coolant's going. Are you a mechanical guy? Are you making repairs yourself? I mean, do you change your own spark plugs and do that kind of work? I can. Okay. Well, I mean, the, Dave, what were you going to? Well, I was going to I was gonna rule out the transmission first. Pull out the transmission dipstick and just make sure it doesn't have any uh, coolant in there. That would be the first place I would go just to make sure. Now, now how okay. for the normal person or average person, how in the heck is transmission fluid going to get or is coolant going to get in the transmission, Dave? 
That oh. transmission is cooled via the radiator. So there's a line that runs from the transmission up to the radiator and then a line that runs back. There's a separate compartment in the bottom of that radiator where the transmission fluid is cooled. Sometimes the, there's a deterioration between the two of those and the engine coolant gets into the transmission. So that's one of the first things I would try and rule out, and that's a pretty quick thing to pull out the dipstick. And hope that's not the case because that means you've got a transmission problem. That's, and a radiator problem. And a radiator problem, exactly. Okay, yeah. I, I changed out. I put in a new radiator. Um, because I thought that was the problem, you know, and so I put in a new radiator, and it still it still loses fluid. Yeah, how much was that radiator, by the way? Uh, it was about two hundred dollars. Okay, two hundred dollars towards a repair that that you know didn't didn't work. But what I want, <laughs> yeah. what, you know, so and I and I and I'm not picking on you. I'm just you know saying because you did take it somewhere to to have them do a diagnosis, and they came up inconclusive, but. That, that's painful. I mean, I hate doing that as a shop. We put a $200 radiator in a car, it doesn't fix it. Now we own a $200 radiator. The customer doesn't. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wondering if that's going in the combustion chamber. So combustion. pulling out some spark plugs well, and look at the spark plugs, is there any evidence? And that's what I want That's what I want you to do, Glenn. Maybe pull out the spark plugs. If you see any external leaks anywhere, get the engine hot to the point, you know, it's hot warmed up. If you're capable, get the spark plugs out. You have a French pressure tester. Leave that thing on pressure. Let it go from being hot to cooling down with all the spark plugs out, and then you want to be looking for water in the cylinders. That will help us determine and or eliminate a cylinder head gasket. That's what I would be doing. Yeah, it's one of those mysterious things, you know. I mean, he's probably a 98 Chevy. He's got some benefit out of that radiator, but at the same oh, time, sure. yeah, yeah. that's the kind of the value of diagnostics so you don't go chasing. You know, I got a cool thing from my phone the other day, infrared camera, iPhone. Cool stuff. Anyhow, we'll see you next week. You listen to Matt and Dave, Bumper to Bumper Radio.